Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and welcome back to another Cura tutorial. In this video, we are going to be figuring out how we can fine tune our top and bottom layers to get absolute print perfection. So, let's go ahead and get into this video. So we're going to cover a lot in this video, and I went ahead and I've chaptered out this video for you, so you can skip to whatever section you want. But I wouldn't, just because you're going to miss that one sweet tip that you're going to really need. Where's that at? I don't know. It depends on you. So first, let's take a second and explain top and bottom layer settings. So our top and bottom are actually the very bottom layers of our 3D print and the very top layers of our 3D print. And you can control these separately. And... These are really important settings because this can control the smoothness of those top settings and also your adhesion to your bottom layers to prevent maybe warping if you're getting that. So you can control the settings for the amount of different bottom layers you have and the amount of top layers you have. This controls our line directions and our line patterns. There's a lot we're going to cover. Now, one thing to understand is our skin, because we're going to be dealing with some settings that is specific to skin when it comes to our top layers. This is what gives us a nice smooth consistency and a nice finish when it comes to our 3D prints. It also gives us a little more strength and stability when it comes to 3D printing, because we can control the thickness and even the patterns of the 3D prints. So, now that we have a general understanding of what the skin is, the outside of our 3D prints, let's get into some of the settings in Cura, and I'll explain those. So I went ahead and brought in this box, and let's go into our settings. And one thing before I even get started, if you don't have all the settings I have, you want to click on this hamburger icon and then go to All, and that will give you all of the settings available to you in Cura. Now we're going to go into our top and bottom settings and bring that menu down. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is our top surface skin layers. And by default, if you're using any of the standard default settings, it is set to zero. And what this is, is this is adding an extra layer for our skin surface. And if you see here, we've got top surface skin layers, then top and bottom thickness. So if I go in and add one skin layer, now you can see that this moved down and we've got a bunch of other settings because these are all attributed directly to our skin layer. And I also wanted to show you how many top layers we have. We have it set to four top layers right now. So if I move up, one, two, three, four, and that is the very top. Now let's go ahead and add one layer of skin and then let's slice it. Now we have one, two, three, four, five because we now have a skin layer. So we have our four top layers, but then we also have an additional top skin layer. Now, when it comes to our top surface skin line width, this is whatever your typical line width is. So I have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, which means I wanna have my line width set to the same diameter for my top surface skin line width. Then the next thing we have is our top surface skin pattern. Now we can change the pattern of this. Right now it's just lines and it goes back and forth. But if we go to the drop down, we can do concentric or we can do zigzag. Now an important thing to understand with lines, lines are just separate lines that the nozzle moves and prints a line. These are not connected in any way. They're just separate lines printing out. And you can see that if we play through right here. Now if we jump down to the zigzag pattern, since we're right here, and you can see with zigzag, it is one continuous line. It just rounds the corner and keeps going. And from afar, zigzag looks pretty much the exact same as lines, except that it has a little bit of a rounded corner when it goes to the next line and changes direction. Now the next one is concentric. Now concentric is basically a circular pattern or the perimeter of the actual print is how it will go. Since this is a box, it basically just keeps making boxes that get smaller and smaller. And if we play through here, you can see that this is how it goes. And it just creates a nice pattern that is concentric to our actual shape of our model. Now, the one thing also, you can see that our very top layer right here, now it's just printing lines. So it's printing this skin concentric pattern on top of our last top layer. 
So if you have more organic prints that are maybe like circular or, you know, rounded, Concentric's kind of a nice top skin layer pattern to have because then you don't see those lines. You actually just see the shape of that actual pattern building up. So for me, sometimes I like to switch to Concentric when it comes to my top skin layer and the quality of it just looks nice. All right, real quick, I just wanted to say Thank you. Thank you to all of these amazing people supporting me on Patreon this month. If you want to be like these awesome people, you'll get exclusive access to my private Discord servers where we talk about everything. 3D printing, painting 3D prints, and even sharing our fails. But it's a great community. You can also get access to all of my behind the scenes content where I show you what I'm working on and you can even have the opportunity to vote on the videos that I make. This video right here was what was voted on for this month. They want some more Cura tutorials and guess what? Here they are. If you're interested, I'll leave a link below. Other than that, Let's get back to the video. So the next settings are directly correlated to the thickness of our bottom layers and our top layers. And we can actually just set these and they can be the same for both, or we can actually make them independent to where our bottom layer is thicker and our top layer is thinner. Now, the one thing I will say, if we do not have enough top layers in our 3D prints, we can get some really bad effects and things that we just don't want when it comes to our 3D prints. One is honestly holes and gaps, and we've already discussed that. We wanna have enough to where we can fill those holes and gaps, especially for those peaks and domes. That's where you can really get some of those holes and gaps because there's not enough layers to be able to accommodate for that angle that we're printing at. The second one is something called pillowing. And pillowing, you might have seen this, and maybe you didn't know what it's called, but this is where you're 3D printing, let's say, a flat surface. And you can actually see the pattern of your infill because it didn't actually fill it properly. Because it was either bumping down or it was bulging up where it actually hit those infill lines. And pillowing is something that it just looks ugly. And we'll get into that later and I'll show you some examples. Now, the one thing to consider is the more top layers and bottom layers you add, the more your print time will be. So you want to find that happy medium to where your quality is looking great and you have just enough top layers and bottom layers when it comes to our thicknesses. So let's jump into Cura and let me show you where we can change these settings. So I went ahead and set my top surface skin layers back to zero. So if we look right here, our top and bottom thickness settings are right here. We have our top thickness right there, and then down here we have our bottom thickness. Now there's two settings when it comes to each of these. Now we can actually set this for both of them at the same time. So if I wanted this to be a one millimeter layer thickness, we could absolutely do that. And then this would change our bottom thickness and our top thickness. But I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at a 0.8 top and bottom thickness. Now, the other thing we have is if we wanted to separate these out, we can actually separate just what our top thickness is by millimeters, and then down here, our bottom thickness by millimeters. Now, there's another setting that actually can override the millimeters. If we just want to be printing this at a certain amount of layers, we can go right here to our top layers. So I could say I want six top layers. And you can see how this gets grayed out. So now it's saying, okay, well our top and bottom thickness is at a 0.8, but you want this many layers for our top layers. So this is what we're gonna print. So those are the settings when it comes to our top and bottom layer thickness. Now, when it comes to our top layer thickness, I think it's important for you to actually see what the differences are when you only have a few top layers and a lot more top layers. So I went ahead and I printed out examples to show you what it looks like to have one layer thickness versus six. So we're gonna look at all of the different thicknesses so you can have a better understanding of how it affects your 3D prints. 
So I've got these examples of showing us what our different top layer setting looks like. Now, this goes from one top layer to two, three, four, five, and six top layers. It's just really important to understand and see what these examples actually look like because if you're experiencing some of these issues, increasing your top layer can just fix it automatically. So let's examine each one of these and see what the differences are and what the issues are from having not enough top layers to maybe too many top layers. So here's our example of printing just one top layer. And obviously we've got all of these gaps in here and the, it just doesn't look great. And what this is doing is it doesn't have anything to squish and actually get a good line thickness because it's actually bridging across each of these gaps. And these gaps is where we're getting this drooping. And you can see right here, I can just peel them apart if I wanted to. But if you're really wanting to see through your print, this might actually work for you. But I've never run into an instance where I want to be able to see every single line and have all of these gaps and see my infill. But this might actually be something you're going for, for a certain effect. Who knows? But for me, I know that one top layer is never enough. So now we see here, we actually have two top layers. And the two top layers, if I kinda, if you see in the light here, and this is giving a little bit of a bulge to it. And this is exactly what I was talking about when it comes to pillowing. And this is a prime example of what pillowing is. Because it's attaching right at the infill lines perfectly, but it doesn't have enough support yet to be able to just give a nice smooth finish. And you can still kind of see through it a little bit. I mean, some of these have a little bits of holes and it's just not enough. So two layers is something you really wouldn't want. Now, if we move to three layers, three layers is looking a lot better, but if we go in the light, you can still see that infill pattern. This is something that I would definitely increase my top layer lines because three just isn't enough. When you can still see that infill pattern, I mean, it's time to increase it. So three is definitely not what we want. Now we're at four top layers and four top layers is typically the setting that I like to go with. And look at this. I mean, it is a beautiful, shiny surface and it's also very smooth. Now it does have a little bit of a rough texture to it and you can see those lines, but for the most part, it is a really good top layer count because we don't see that infill anymore. Now jumping from four to five, it's still, it looks great. And there's not a lot of difference between four and five layers because it already has that support to be able to print a good top layer. And for this, I mean, it looks great. And if you're looking for more strength, having five layers is not a bad idea to do. And then finally, six layers. And uh, honestly, at this point, you've just got so many layers that you're going to have a nice smooth surface. So there's not a huge difference between four, five, and six layers, because you can see here, it is nice and smooth. There is a little bit of a texture to it just because of our lines, but for the most part, it, it's good. But this one definitely has the most strength. And if you actually match your wall thickness to your line count on your top layers and bottom layers, you're going to have a very strong print. So the next thing is our bottom layers. We can change that to a specific number two. Let's say I want a really solid base. So I could actually change this to like maybe eight if I wanted to. Remembering that this would definitely increase my print time. But if I want something very strong on the bottom of this, I could do that. So the next setting is our initial bottom layers. And this is typically tied right to the amount of bottom layers to let it know this is the first layers that I want you to print. But moving down here, you can see that we have our top and bottom pattern and our bottom pattern initial layer. So for the very first layer, we can control what kind of pattern we want. So let's say that I might want concentric for my very first one and then zigzag for all of the rest of them. So if I actually slice this, you can see the very bottom layer is now a concentric pattern but the next layers are all zigzag. So another setting I wanna discuss is monotonic top bottom ordering. 
Now, this one can be a little bit confusing. I've got an example to show you what it does, and this is basically the order of how it prints our very top layer. So I'm gonna show you the differences of having this setting on and having this setting off. So right here, monotonic top bottom order. So I've got this model with just some holes in it. And just to show you, when we're actually going through here, it'll actually print our walls first, and then it'll start filling in everything. So here's all the walls, and then this is how it's going to fill in. And typically what it does is when it hits a break right there, it'll just keep going, but then it will keep going whatever makes sense to make it as fast of a print as it can. So you can see that it goes backwards, and then it starts right here and fills this gap in, then it comes back and fills this little bit in, and then it goes through here, and you can see how it's really just jumping around, and it's not actually being consistent and getting a smooth top layer here. So the biggest thing here is you can just see how it's not consistent of how it fills in the top layer. Now, if we actually click this setting and enable it, Let's slice it. So now when you see this go through, it is actually going to do the same thing and just keep printing when it gets a hole, but then it's going to come right back and actually start finishing the top layer in the same direction. So essentially what it's doing is it's going back and not allowing any of this weird gapping or anything like that. So it's going back while that filament might still be hot, and be able to have a good bondage and less gaps potentially. So it's trying to actually fill it in evenly and move through the entire top layer to fill it in a nice smooth pattern. Now the big thing here is sometimes when you have a big smooth surface and some holes like this, when it jumps back to where that huge gap was, you might not get as smooth of a finish for that top layer. So basically, it's going back and it's making sure that it's connecting to everything in an even way. Now, if you have holes in your 3D prints, this is a good setting to have because it's not gonna just randomly print here, randomly print here, and then fill in the rest later. Now, I like to have this setting turned on because it just gives it a smoother top layer. Now, the next setting is top and bottom line directions. And this is the angles of which we want to print our top and bottom layers. Now, typically, it will print at a 45 degree angle. And why that is, is because it will print its fastest when both X and Y motors are enabled. Because when it's going at an angle, your bed is moving for the Y and your X is moving for the belt across. So when both of these motors are enabled, it's actually just printing a lot faster because it's traveling more. But some of you might be wanting to get a consistent look on your top and bottom layers. And this is where we can change these settings. And let me show you what it does. So the first thing we'll see here is it is actually printing at a 45 degree angle. Now, if we go to our top and bottom line directions, you're going to see this little bracket. And this is the important thing to note. We need to leave this bracket here and we're gonna type our numbers in there. So if I say 90 and then say comma, and 90, then hit slice. So then we can see that now it is going horizontally and it was turned 90 degrees. Now, this is the one thing. When you look here and we set these both to 90, if you look, we're going through our, our top layers right now and they're all going at that 90 degrees. So if I actually want to alternate this, I would hit zero for that. So 90, then zero, and then slice it. Now you can see this one's vertical and the next one is horizontal. So these two numbers alternate. Now 90 degrees is horizontal and zero is vertical. So I could set this to say 45 degrees and then slice it. Now I'm going to have my first layer printed at a horizontal at 90 degrees. Then the next layer will be at a 45 degree angle. And then the next layer is at 90 degrees. So if you wanna actually change this, it's perfectly fine. And this will give you a nice consistent look and pattern when it comes to our top layers. So if you're actually printing something like this and you wanna have it all consistent, 
this is where you want to change your line direction. So there's another setting that I think is really important, especially for those of you that are trying to get a really smooth top layer, and that is ironing. So what ironing is, is it essentially will 3D print your entire top layer, and then when it's done with that last layer, the nozzle moves back across your actual print, and that will help smooth it out because it's keeping the nozzle hot. So that hot nozzle is just smoothing it out. And let me show you what those settings are in Cura. So now let's go here to enable ironing. And I'm going to check that, and then a few settings are gonna pop up for me. Now, one thing is, is we can iron only the highest layer. And this is something that I actually do because it also saves print time. Because you gotta think about, it is moving across to try to smooth everything. And I only want it to smooth the very top layer. Now, when it comes to our ironing pattern, we have a few. We have zigzag and we have concentric. Now, let's just leave it on zigzag and let me show you what this looks like. So first, let's see what it looks like without ironing. And you can see that it's just our very top layer. Now, if we click on ironing and then we just hit slice, now we see all of these little lines. And this is the actual travel on the very top layer. Now, it's not another layer. It stays on the same layer and it is going back and forth. And if you see here, they're just kind of looping around in a zigzag pattern. And that is the actual ironing pattern right here, zigzag. Another thing we could do is concentric. So if we slice that, so if we slice that, now we see that all of the lines are going vertical. And if we really zoom in here, we can see that all of these are going around in this circle. So they're going this way and around. So it's going in a concentric pattern. And this is really going to smooth out our 3D prints on the very top layer. So we also have our ironing flow. And that is actually putting out just a little bit of filament. And this will actually help fill in any little gaps we may have. So it's set to 10% right now. And if you don't want to have any filament coming out, all we've got to do is set it to 0%. The other thing is our inset. Our ironing inset is vital because that is actually coming in on our 3D print. So what the inset is, is if our wall is right here, it's going to actually come just before it gets to the edge. And that will keep our edges of our 3D print nice and sharp. Because if you don't have an inset, it's just going to come over here and it's going to get a little bit of a rough edge. So you want to make sure you have your inset. So let me show you those two settings. So right here is the ironing flow and it is at 10% of our normal flow rate just to put out just a tiny bit of filament. And that's what these little lines are. The other thing is our inset and we're coming in just a little bit. And if we look on our edges here, you can see that it's just inside here. Now, when it comes to our speed, this needs to be nice and slow. And Cura will automatically determine how slow it should go. And this is one of those settings that I have never messed with. I always leave it at whatever the default is because I get really good results with it. So the next thing we have is our skin overlap. And when we have our skin layers, they can overlap with our walls. So if our walls are here and we don't have any overlap, they're just touching. But if we overlap them, that's going to give a really good bond to our skin and our walls. So let me show you what it really looks like. So if we see here first, we have our skin and our walls. And you can see right here. Now, they're all just touching. But if I increase this to, let's say, 50% and slice it, you can now see our skin is actually overlapping with our actual walls. And this will definitely make sure that we have a good bond between our walls and our skin layers. Now, by default, Cura will set it to 10%. I will typically make it about 25% because I really want to make sure that I have a good adhesion to my walls and my skin. So it's slightly overlapping as you see here. The next setting we have here is our skin removal width. This setting determines the width of the nozzle path when removing the skin. Increasing this setting can help to improve any unwanted skin that may be present in the model. And this will also improve our surface finish. But I will say, increasing the skin width too much can lead to unwanted removal of skin. When we want that there, it could remove it if we set this too high. 
And this really helps when we have slanted top angles. So we can see right here, all of this yellow right here, and this is helping with our skin. And if we actually increase this, like, by a crazy amount, let's say five millimeters, and you can see where it removes that, and that is what could fill those gaps on those very top layers, especially when we have slants like this. Then with the next setting we have is our skin expand distance. This setting determines the distance between the skin and the walls that are expanded. Expanding the skin can help fill in any small gaps and imperfections in the model. It can also improve our surface finish. But if we actually increase this too much, we could get loss of details in our model, and it's also going to use a lot more filament. So it's set right now to 1.2 millimeters. But let's move this out to say five millimeters so you can get an idea of what it does. So now at five millimeters, you can see that this is completely filled in. And this, like I said, will help with any holes that you may be getting in the tops of your prints but it's using more filament. So those are all the settings that I think you should know when it comes to your top and bottom layer settings. These are vital to be able to get nice smooth top prints and also being able to get good bed adhesion and get less warping because you have more bottom layers. I typically go on the side of having more top and bottom layers because it makes my prints stronger and my top layers, it makes them a lot smoother. But remember, that's just me. I'm using a lot more filament too, but that's a waste that I'm willing to take because I want those prints to be really strong and rigid. So you should definitely be playing with these settings and trying to figure out what works best for you because there really is no right answer because everybody prints in a different way. It's really what you're wanting. And I like ironing stuff. It does take just a little bit more time, but the smoothness of my top layers are fantastic. But now you know all of the settings that are really vital when it comes to your top and bottom layer settings. So experiment with them. And I really hope that this is going to help you get those beautiful 3D prints. And I really hope that this has helped you understand a little more about our top and bottom layer settings. So if you've enjoyed this video, I've got another video where I am actually going through every single setting that I look at when I'm setting up my 3D print files. Because we're going through a lot of settings right now. but there's certain ones that I always have to keep an eye out on. And you can see all of the things that I think are important in this video. Oh, I completely lost my train of thought. We're going to talk. That's it, done. I'm done, yes.